Your face mask could be doing you more harm than good amid the coronavirus pandemic. By now we know the coronavirus is a threat to all of us, and unless we all pitch in and do our part, it'll stick around longer than we can imagine. While social distancing is the key to controlling the outbreak and to flatten the curve, we are all going to have to resume daily activities in closer proximity to each other sooner than later. This is where skipping handshakes and hugs, washing hands frequently, and making use of face masks start to really matter. Touch me. Don't touch me. But did you ever consider that using a face mask could actually be doing you more harm than good? Find out if your mask is silently infecting you instead of protecting you. In today's videos, it's Masks 101 and the do's and don'ts as we cover the underlying risks of using different face masks and how to overcome these risks in order to keep you and your family safe. But before we try on all the masks, please subscribe to our channel and remember to hit the notification bell for future videos as we explore all the human wonders together one video at a time. Let's get started. So how do face masks work? Face masks and all personal protective equipment, or PPE, work as a barrier between you and pathogens such as the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. What this means is that PPEs are meant to prevent viruses and bacteria from coming into contact with your skin, eyes, mouth, nose, and other parts of your body. Now, as far as scientists know to date, the coronavirus can't enter the body through your skin, but only through the eyes or by reaching your lungs through your mouth or nose. Most person-to-person -person infections are through these tiny microscopic virus droplets when we sneeze, cough, or speak, and they can travel anywhere from 6 feet to as far as 25 feet from the powerful force of a cough or sneeze. That's the distance equivalent to the opposite side of any typical bedroom. So, are you breathing in some stranger's sneeze everywhere, every day? Better cover your face quickly! Masks are meant to be selectively filtering out particles while letting in some air. But why some masks feel like very little airflow is coming through? How does this work? Face masks are made of certain types of porous fabrics that let gaseous substances through, such as air, but blocks out particles such as dust and water droplets from penetrating a web of intertwining filaments of various types of fabric. So will any fabric do the job? Is there anything wrong with making our own face masks out of any pieces of clothing materials? Well, the thing is, when it comes to filters and masks, size is what determines the level of filtration. So what does that mean? It all boils down to how small the particles you want to keep out. The problem is that the droplets we need to keep away from our mouths and noses can be very tiny, reaching sizes as small as 0.1 to 0.5 microns. That's roughly one thousandth of the width of a human hair. So you see, you need a mask that has a mesh tight enough to not let these tiny particles through. Now you know why it's silly for people to put on a mask made out of materials such as a handkerchief, bandana, or even a pantyhose. The pores on these fabrics are way too large. Oh, unless you're trying to get your picture or video to go viral, cause that'll for sure do the job in no time at all. But don't worry, we will show you all about DIY mask materials coming up shortly in this video. But if you simply want to buy the right mask, get an N95 and hit the like button right now. What's so special about the N95 masks? Three major characteristics that make the N95 mask effective. Number one, the materials used. N95 masks are made of several layers, usually four, of different fabrics like spun bond polypropylene, polyester, and cellulose. The spun bond manufacturing process produces a fabric in which all fibers are randomly oriented, as opposed to woven fabrics that follow a precise pattern. This makes filtering much more effective than the normal fabrics clothes are made of, especially if you layer one fabric over another. Number two, design. These masks are also specially designed to fit the contour of almost any face, creating an airtight seal around the edges while still being comfortable enough to be worn for hours. Well, that really depends on the person too. Number three, testing and certification. The 95 in N95 indicates that the mask was tested over and over again, and that it will prevent at least 95% of all particles from going through, including those in the 0.1 to 0.5 microns range. 
Any mask that can certify that it accomplishes this feat will get an N95 seal stamped in its packaging. In short, N95 means that these masks have been thoroughly tested in different ways to make sure they work. You should know that there are other standards and codes other than N95 that tell you that a mask has been tested and certified. Numbers and letters can become a bit confusing, but if you find a mask labeled as EN149 FFP3, that one will filter out 99% of aerosols and even asbestos and fine ceramic powders. Too technical for you? Don't worry. What it means in plain English is that those are far better than the N95s. Well, just not the price and the availability. Simply put, N95 masks are among the only available masks that are certified to be able to effectively filter out the coronavirus. They are exactly what our frontline workers need. This brings us to a huge problem you've no doubt heard of on the news. The world is running out of N95 masks due to the sharp spike in demand. The most dangerous consequence of this shortage is how increasingly difficult for frontline workers like doctors and nurses to get the much needed masks, putting them at great risk while treating patients. One possible solution? You can make your own mask at home and leave the N95 masks for the professionals who need them the most. As we covered earlier, the problem with DIY is the choice of materials. And now we are going to cover the top three risks of using reusable DIY face masks and some quick solutions. Risk number one, used masks can be very contaminating. The biggest threat that face masks in general pose is the fact that all the potentially infected droplets are caught in the mask itself and become much more concentrated. In other words, used masks can become highly contaminated and they can easily affect you if mishandled while removing them and storing them while attempting to save them for later uses. You should wash them after each use with hot soapy water and a splash of chlorine bleach and let air dry completely before the next use. Risk number two, DIY masks may not effectively filter out the virus. So we know now that a good mask against coronavirus needs several layers of special fabrics to block out 95% of droplets, not just one layer of cotton, for example. You should use several layers by combining different materials like synthetic polyester fabrics when making these reusable DIY masks. Making a one-layer mask to wear should make you feel like leaving home naked. Don't do it. Risk number three, false sense of security. People tend to think that wearing a mask and gloves is enough to make us invincible. This false sense of security could lead us into reckless behaviors like breaking required quarantine and going out without a valid reason, or forgetting to wash our hands frequently. We should always follow WHO guidelines by staying at home when we don't need to be out, washing our hands frequently, keeping hard surfaces clean, and maintaining proper distance from others when you absolutely need to go out. Okay, we've covered a lot, and yes, we are 90% done with the video. Great job coming this far with us. But we did say this is Masks 101, so we are just going to cover one final mask type. It's the most common type we see everywhere. Can you guess what they are? Yes, those blue medical surgical masks from Walmart and Amazon for under a buck each. Hey, those are doctor's masks. They have to work perfectly, right? Uh, not so fast. We have to keep in mind that this is not about who the masks are for, but about what they're for. Surgical procedural masks are designed primarily to shield patients from potentially being infected by bacteria when a doctor is performing surgery. Yes, they do protect the doctor as well to some extent, but from bacteria, not necessarily from viruses. Viruses are way smaller than bacteria, so the fact that these masks can filter out bacteria doesn't necessarily imply that they can filter out coronavirus as well. To give you an idea, if a virus was the size of a person, bacteria would be the size of a house. So don't be misled by a stamp that claims to filter out 99% of bacteria. There are, however, newly designed blue masks that have an extra layer as an added improvement for protection, but how much more protection? Be sure to read the labels when buying masks. Think of it this way. There's a reason why we can find those blue masks online, but the N95 masks are running out everywhere. 
As a matter of fact, guidelines from the CDC and the HHS actually advise against the use of surgical masks by healthcare workers that may be exposed to viruses like influenza. Food for thought. Okay, now we really are 90% done with the video. We said 90% earlier just so you don't miss out important information. Now let's wrap up this video on Masks 101. We promise you will feel so much safer and more knowledgeable that you can figure out why Batman and ninjas wear their masks differently. Here are final quick tips to minimize risks using face masks. 1. Test how effective your mask is before trusting it with your health. There is a simple yet effective way to test the quality of a mask at home without using advanced equipment. Just put your mask on and try to blow out a candle as hard as you can. If the candle doesn't go out, your mask is probably good. But if it does go out, you need to use a different material, add extra layers of fabric, or buy a better mask. 2. Try out different designs until you find one that best fits your face. You need to make sure that there is an airtight seal between your mask and your face. This depends heavily on the design of the mask, so try them out until you find one that doesn't let air in through the sides of your nose or the bottom of your chin. And for many blue masks, don't forget to bend down that metal wire over your nose to close the gap between mask and face. 3. Wear your mask properly. This is really important, because even if you have the best mask in the market or the best designed DIY mask, if you don't put it on right, making sure it's tight enough and that it covers your nose and mouth properly, it will be as if you didn't even have one on. Finally, wear your masks at all times when you are out in public. This is as much for your own protection as it is for the protection of others, since the mask is a very effective shield for others against your own coughs and sneezes. Make sure that the mask is comfortable so that you won't feel the need to take it off. As you can see, masks are a necessity to prevent further spread of this virus. They don't only prevent you from catching it, but also from spreading it around in the case that you are infected but asymptomatic. Just remember, there's a science to masks. Not all will protect you, and if used or handled incorrectly, they can end up doing more harm than good. So there goes the world of face masks. Which of these masks do you wear? How did you make your own? Which ones are more comfortable? Comment down below and share your thoughts. Thank you for watching.